Good morning, everybody. Today is day four of the Corona Chronicles, and my day's going pretty slow so far. All I've really done is come down this ladder right here and sat in this chair. So today will be a little different from these past couple of days. I'll be going into work, which is nice because I haven't gotten paid in like two weeks because I've been at home doing mental push-ups. It's about nine o'clock right now and so I have a couple hours before I go to work and so I would like to get through some of my morning routine which involves some exercise, a little bit of meditation, uh, a good breakfast, a little bit of dancing. What else do I do? I have this little daily reminder thing right here. The banjo, maybe some journaling. Yeah. So having some extra time during this quarantine has allowed me to uh, practice and study some activities that like normally I feel like I don't have time to do. It doesn't take a lot to meditate. All you gotta do is sit down. Heck, you don't even have to sit down. You don't even have to close your eyes. You don't even have to think about anything. Meditating might actually be one of the easiest things to do. You just have to make time for it. one of the things that I get out of meditation is the training of my mind. So for example, an exercise in meditation is to think of the things for which you are grateful for. And this exercise or this practice is not something that I'm doing very often, sometimes once a day. But in taking the time to sit down and to clear my mind, to let thoughts come and to examine those thoughts, I find myself trying to plan for my life and I find myself trying to figure out how to optimize and strategize so that I'll get the highest return on my actions. I also find myself looking back on what I've already done and where I am right now and having like extreme gratitude for where I am. And I realized that this practice, the practice of taking 10, 12 minutes just to sit and think and to watch these different thought patterns come into my head, there's a, there's a feeling that wash, washes over me. And it's the, it's the feeling of gratitude. It's being okay with where I am and being thankful and not only living in this ambitious future. It's being in the present. It's being thankful. And so I feel, I got this inkling that this practice in meditation will actually make it more likely that I do this during the regular day. So it feels good. That was a little small breakthrough I just had. Hope that inspires some of you guys. Take some time to sit down and let your mind quiet and sit. And uh, I think it's good. I think it's a good investment for you and for your life. I think my right arm's stronger oh, than my left arm. So these are 40 pound dumbbells, and I think it took me two months before I could lift one of them like this. I find that most meaningful gains that I experience in my life in different aspects, in working out, in skateboarding, uh, in playing a musical instrument. All of it, it's always over the long term. I'm like, I want to be really good right now. But it's like, no, you'll be really good in 10 years if you keep practicing. These days in quarantine are quite long, so I try to fill them up with as wide a variety of things that are engaging and stimulating as possible. One of those is playing the banjo. 
Uh, now, I've got family from the Midwest. Uh, my father's family came from Louisiana and originally France and way, way back, I mean, like Africa, of course. And my mother's family came from Missouri and Kansas. Uh, and there's a big mix all around. There's some German, some English, some Welsh. Um, but there's a lot of Midwestern and I would imagine Appalachian uh, blood in, in my veins. Uh, and so I've always wanted to connect uh, more strongly to my roots, and so playing the banjo uh, is one of the ways for me to do that. I believe the banjo originally came out of West Africa, uh, and I forget what the evolution of the name was, but eventually it got turned into what we call banjo now. Uh, now I imagine that it got brought to West Africa through the uh, Islamic Golden Age, during around 1100 AD when the, when the Islamic Empire spread across North Africa. Uh, and so I would imagine stringed instruments got moved into Western African culture around that time. Uh, perhaps not. Or perhaps they've been there for a lot longer, but that's what I would guess. Now, I'll just watch tutorials uh, online, and I got this in November, so I haven't been playing for too long. Uh, and I'm not very good, but this is... This is the footwork that I'm putting in for that long-term goal of being able to play well. try and put some words to it, which is much harder, I think. Uh, so, bear with me. Going down the Cripple Creek Going on a run Going down the Cripple making another smoothie this morning because they are tasty and good for me and my immune system. So you can see I got some power greens in there. Now these are the power greens I got from Costco, five bucks for like 20 pounds. Now how much is it? One and a half pounds. Because they taste nasty, that's how you know that they're power greens. So I've just made it to work and it is empty. Don't call me empty. It's just like a black hole here. I just see hands. <laughs> this is the edge of space. Space, space, space. So I'm at work. It's a pretty busy day today. I'm gonna make sure all these knuckleheads don't mess around in the building. We are closed until further notice. So don't come up here. It's a nice job. Pretty cushy. So I'm home after a back-breaking day at work. Me and Teak here, it's kitchen hour here at Raymond Condo number two, so we're cooking up some stuff. Got some cabbage here, it's going in. Zucchini, going in. I was just telling Teak that what I'm making right now, the color of it is gorgeous. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at that purple and green. Looks like we chopped up Barney and put him in a stew. 
that is just so gorgeous. That plant color, oh, natural. My goodness, we're eating well tonight.